I've owned the AAP01 for about a year now, and I think I can safely say that it's one of my favorite sidearms for Airsoft ever. I really like the weight, the look, uh, the potential for external accessories. I've really enjoyed installing things like a trigger, a magwell, mounted optics that doesn't affect the cycle speed. I think it has a lot of potential and a lot going for it. But what I noticed was a distinct lack of internal upgrades for this system. You can swap the inner barrel and the bucking, but for the most part you are very restricted on what you can swap when it comes to internals. So I thought I would change that and develop a recoil spring, a nozzle spring, and a short stroke kit. And so today in this video I'm going to go over about how to install them and their benefits. So I've explained short stroke before and what that basically is, is you can shorten the amount of travel that your pistol makes, so it doesn't go back as far. And the advantage in this is you can shoot just a little bit quicker. You get a slightly faster cycle speed and it's especially noticeable in full auto. And the cool thing about the AAP01 is you can short stroke and still retain lockback. It actually has a slight bit of over travel before the lockback engages. So you can actually stro short stroke this pistol and still retain lockback. Alternatively, you can short stroke it even further, get faster cycle speed, but no lockback. And I'll be showing how you do both. I'll also be showing you how to change the recoil spring, and the recoil spring will also affect your cycle speed and the rate of fire you get in full auto. And finally, to ensure all this works appropriately and you feed the BBs correctly, I've also created a nozzle spring that will help retract the nozzle in time, and I will also show how to install that and how good it is. So if some of you might be thinking that I, because I'm using the Mamba Upper by Action Army that this disassembly and installation will be different, and honestly, they are very, very, very similar compared to the standard upper. So if you're watching this and you're a bit confused and worried if this will work, I promise you it will be no different. So let me just show you the products we'll be installing today. We have our Lil Snap nozzle spring for AAP01. This also works in G17, G18 and Glock 34. We have our AAP01 short stroke buff kit. And I'll show you how we install this and how it can be tuned and all its possibilities. And then finally, we have our iconic Snappy Boy recoil spring for AAP01, which features a lovely gold finish for slicker shots. So I'll show you how we get that installed too. It's very, very easy. So first, let's eject the mag. Put it to one side. Make sure your hammer is fired and not cocked, just makes this all a lot easier. Next up, you're going to want to uninstall your rear iron sights. Now for Mamba uppers, you will need to take this screw off. And if you are using the plastic upper, just wait a second and I'll show you exactly how you remove the iron sights. So just screw this bit off. Once that's done, this will lift back and this little screw will pop out. So put it somewhere safe that you'll keep hold of. Then you'll also notice this spring, which helps keep tension between uh, these iron sights and the base. Just make sure that doesn't come out. It actually stays pretty stiff in there, so you shouldn't have to worry. Now, for the next part, this will be what I was referring to earlier with people who still have the plastic uppers. On your iron sights, you will see these two screws. And all you have to do is just unscrew them. It's very simple and uh, it won't take you long. And for those using the metal uppers, you will also need to do the same. The only difference is one extra screw, which we've just undone just now. Be sure to keep these screws somewhere safe and collected with your rear sights and it should just lift off. What you now want to do is separate your upper from your lower. So to do that, you simply press on this button and these should lift apart. And then you just want to pull up gently from your lower. It takes a bit of FNAF. There we go. Separated. Now your bolt will simply just slide out. And then you can put your upper somewhere safe. And there we have it. That's all it takes to remove your bolt system, which we'll be working on today. So first off, we want to unscrew these two screws hidden here.
and then once that's done you'll be able to just pull this out and this will bring out this small little plastic platform that holds your two screws and your nozzle return spring. So we're just going to put this to one side for now and we will come back to that in a second. Next you can pull out your nozzle and now you can pull out your nozzle return spring. There we go. And now you can get your guide rod out. Fantastic. So firstly I'll be showing you how to short stroke and what needs to be changed. This is your guide rod, it's what your recoil spring sits on and it's also what your short stroke will be sitting on. This is our buff short stroke kit. Let me show you what you get in this kit. So in this kit, you will get three yellow buffs, which are slightly thicker than that of our black little buffs here. And then you'll also get a metal shim, and I'm gonna cover that in a second, it's a very important part. To anybody who might already own our short stroke kit for high capper, this will look very similar in the sense of the colors and the thicknesses and the rubber, but in a much different shape. So to start with, we're gonna use some very basic short strokes. So we're just going to start with one yellow, one black, and another black. And then we will also be using the metal shim. So for the Mao, these can all go to one side. So what you want to do is get your recoil rod, make sure it's this way up, and you get one black buff kit, and you slide it down there so it sits nice and flush. You get one yellow, slide it down, and then your black buffer, the last of your rubber buffers, and then you have that all sat on there nicely. And basically with these remaining parts, you can mix and match them, see what type of arrangements you can get, how much recoil you want, the types of recoil you want, and how much short stroke you want. For now, we'll be doing something very simple, and I think in this theory, this will still retain our lock back. And so we'll just go from here, but that's basically where we will be starting from today. And from then on, you just tune and add more or less for your desired effect. You then want to add your metal shim. And I'll explain why this is important in just a second. Next, we're going to grab our recoil spring. So this is our snappy boy recoil spring for AAP01. So this recoil spring is actually very special because unlike any other recoil spring on the market, it is coated with this lovely gold finish. And this is a secret finish we use at Walder Customs on all our springs. And what it basically allows for is a much slicker and less friction induced effect when shooting your pistols and your other rifles that we will be using this coating on. So you get less friction, a much slicker experience, and it is also very pretty to look at. So. You then want to slide this over your recoil rod. Make sure it's all aligned and sticking properly. So the reason we have this metal plate here is to stop your recoil spring damaging the other rubber buffers. This is known to happen before in the past with other short stroke kits, but doesn't happen with ours purely because of this metal plate. It offers a lot of advantages in this case. So that is all assembled and finished. So what we will do, we'll grab our bolt and to install this, it's a bit difficult. So you actually have to take your recoil spring off. You have to slide this on through here. You need to make sure your little mushroom shaped buffs are sat correctly and they should sit lovely and flush and like they were made to be there, all perfect. And then you will slide your recoil spring through the top of the chamber, down over your recoil guide rod and onto these buffs. Very simple, very easy. So before we move on to the nozzle spring, I'm actually going to apply some lubricant here to make sure this all moves perfectly and nicely, and also maybe brush off some existing lube. So first off, I'm just gonna take a cloth and make sure we get rid of any old lube and make sure it's a little more dry. Once that's done, we can move on to applying our own lubricant. So for this, I will be using the lube that we make at Waldo Customs, which is our medium slick silicon lube. We're just going to apply this to our recoil spring to make it even slicker than anything else on the market and just make sure everything's perfect and slidey.
we just want a little dab, maybe two or three drops. Spin that around, make sure it's all carefully put on. It's better to use less than more initially and slowly add the amount that you think you need. This looks fine, just make sure it's moving back and forth, okay, perfect. Brilliant. We will actually be lubing more of this carrier later, but for now we'll move on to the next step. So next is take on nozzle and inspect it. Make sure it's clean, rub down any old lubricant and make sure there's no breaks or anything. Just while we're here, take advantage of it whilst it's there. Once that's done, we'll actually move on to lubing the internal o-ring that is on our blowback housing. So to do this, I will actually be using our slim lubricant that we use. This will be much better for uh, the o-ring on this and the rubber. It will ensure that it is not catching or breaking over time and that the seal is just further reinforced and a bit better for our pistol. Again, just like our spring, very light dropping. Nothing too much. And then we just gently push that in, make sure it's getting into all the right places. Brilliant, just something as little as that. And so next we can grab our nozzle spring and slide it down. You'll just have to align this, make sure it's all okay. And then it just simply drops in, perfect. And so next we can move on to our nozzle spring. So as I said earlier, we have that little plastic platform with those two screws and our nozzle spring on it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take out these screws and put them to one side so that they're nice and safe. We'll then want to take our old nozzle spring off. It's on sort of a friction fit little plug here, so you should be okay taking this off as long as you're gentle. Put this to one side now, we won't be needing it again. And then we put this down we grab our nozzle springs. So with our nozzle springs you do actually get two and this is just because I want to make sure that anybody who buys our products is safe and insured and you just have a backup in case something goes wrong in installation or it eventually eats itself out on the field. You'll have a backup, you have an alternative and it just is a bit more value for your money and just gets you a bit further. This is also coated in our lovely gold slick finish. Put this somewhere safe because you might need it again if you ever need another nozzle spring. So just to be clear, you do get two nozzle springs in the kit, but you will only be needing one at any given moment. So we'll grab our little plastic platform and we'll just simply slide it over this little ledge here on the side. It'll be a bit of a friction fit, but it will still go on perfectly. There we go. All smooth and snug on there. We can then grab our carrier, align this nozzle spring with a small hole on the side here. That's actually where it wants to be going down, and it sits on the small post of our nozzle. That's actually where the nozzle spring will sit on, this tiny little post here. There you go, and it will sit just like that for now. You then grab your little screws and you place them on the side holes here but not the middle one because that's where your guide rod will be going through. And then you just slowly screw them in and you make sure it is just gently hand tight, nothing overly torqued on. We're almost there now. I just want to clean off this lube here and apply our third and final lube to make sure this is all cycling perfectly smoothly in our AAP. So we're just getting off the lube that was on our recoil spring, as I don't want that on our carrier because there is a more optimal lube we could be using for that. So now that that's done, we will move on to our third and final lube for this installation, which is our special thick lube with two C's. We will want to be applying this just ever so d gently onto our sliding rails and a tiny bit on the top. This will just make for a less friction-based sort of cycle and we'll just smoothen everything out a little bit. And just like our other lubes, you just want to do a small little dab. And what we'll do is we'll just rub that in smoothly across there. 
just do a bit more on the top a little dab and this is actually a bit too much so what we'll do is we'll make sure this spreads onto the sides here too that's the thing you just want to make sure you have the exact right amount you don't want to overdo it perfect that does seem like enough for now our thick lube can be sort of compared to grease because it is simply that thick. It is with two C's. Just use it a bit like that and you should be fine. Conveniently, with every bottle of lube we sell, it does say on the sides exactly what it can be used for. And so in this case, this is a gas blowback bolt and it can sit on the sides just perfectly. Now that that's finally done, we can move to assembly. Always good to wipe your hands of lube though once you've done that prevent it getting from everywhere, although our loop is scented, so your hands do end up smelling just lovely afterwards. It's a lovely sort of jasmine scent. So next we just grab our upper, slide it on down here, make sure that's nice sitting nicely, and then from here we just simply reapply our rear sights. So this is just the backwards process of what you had to do before. Grab your rear sight, align it so that this little hump area here slots into this slot section on the back of your bolt there. And then you want to tighten in these two screws. And if you're using the plastic upper, that will be done. Your iron sights will be installed perfectly. But for us uh, Mamba and CNC upper users, you'll need just one more screw after that, but I'll run that through just now. So let's do these two screws together. Perfect, and just as I said before, just gently hand tight. There's no reason to overdo it. You don't want anything stripping or becoming too stuck in. Then for us Mamba users, you want to just gently close this. And you'll notice that because the spring's still in there, it will be springy. You just want to grab the screw we had before, the flathead screw, pop it in this hole, close it shut just a bit. And then you want to uh, just screw that in with your screwdriver. Nice and gently hand tight. There we have it. Our upper is complete. You'll be able to cycle your bolt. Notice your nozzle is sticking just perfectly. That's good. That means you'll be able to definitely feed every shot and still have a very good air seal. So next we move to adding your lower back in so it's finally fully assembled. And you just need to angle it in gently on here on the lower. It'll click in nicely and you just push it down slightly at the rear and you just push in this button and slowly wiggle it in until it just perfectly closes, just like so. So as you can see, we actually still get slide lock despite being short stroked. So what this will mean is we'll get a faster cycle rate on semi-automatic and fully automatic, so a higher rate of fire but we still get lock back on the final round. I'm just gonna test that now for you so you can just see the exact effect. As you can see, still locks back, shoots a hell of a lot quicker, and because of that nozzle spring, we will be feeding every single shot. Hopefully this video can help you upgrade your AAP01 internally in ways that you maybe didn't consider or think of. This will really significantly change your shooting experience and a lot of effort went into making these parts just so you can have the best optimal experience with your AAP01. I want everyone to enjoy this pistol as much as I do, so I made sure to put as much time and effort as I could into making these products the best possible way. So hopefully this guide was useful in getting these products in and you can send me your videos and pictures and opinions and comment down below what you think and give me all your best opinions of it, please. I'm really excited to get these out here and so far the reaction from people who have bought these products has been overwhelmingly positive and I'm really, really happy to see it. And I'm actually quite honored to be honest. When you see all this good feedback after so much work, it's it's totally worth it and it's exactly what I want from Waldo Custom. So thank you very much for watching this video. We will be doing more. I'm sorry that I've been slacking a bit lately, but we are going to be putting out more videos soon. I want to do a full AAP01 disassembly and reassembly, including the lower, so you'll have everything covered. 
I also have a really exciting video coming of the TAC 41 by Silverback, the Viper Tech Gas Blowback M4, and the rare Nova Staccato slide set for TM High Cap. Lots of really cool reviews and just lots of exciting stuff coming your way soon. So if you want to see all that, be sure to hit subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it and it was helpful, and comment below what you think of the AAP01, if these upgrades look interesting to you. There'll be links in the description if you want to buy them and where exactly you can go. And just thank you again for watching, it really means a lot that you watch these.